Greetings to all of our friends around the world and welcome once again to Kourou, the home of the Ariane family for today's live broadcast of Ariane Space Flight number 247. We're very happy to have you all with us tonight for the launch, an international launch, a double launch, two satellites, and three customers for Saudi Arabia, Greece, and India. At this hour, uh, here at the base and at the countries uh, involved, people are gearing up uh, for the launch, the liftoff due in just under a quarter of an hour. We are go for launch. Coming to you live, as always, from the Jupiter Mission Control Center here in the heart of the space base. We want to take a look outside for a first look and a closer look at the launch vehicle. If you're unfamiliar with Ariane 5, she's the reliable workhorse, the senior member of the Ariane family, designed for heavier launches and, like tonight, dual launches. She stands 51 meters tall. She's in two parts. They call them composites here, a lower composite and an upper one. The lower, including the main stage and the two boosters. The upper composite consisting of the two satellites and the vehicle equipment bay where the computers are. We'll be describing each in turn as it is functioning. The two satellites there, the heaviest, usually separated first. That is the case tonight. Tonight it's HS4 SGS-1, or to use its longer name, Saudi Geostationary Satellite 1 Helisat 4. You'll hear both used tonight. In the upper berth, six and a half tons. The lower deck, GSAT 31, due to be separated at plus 42 minutes. With us tonight, as usual, is Ariane Space's chief executive, Stefan Israel. We have time for a few questions. Good evening, Stephen. Good evening. Good to see you. We have, won't keep you too long, just a few questions. The first question, it's the first launch of the year. What makes it special? Yes, so the year really begins tonight with the first launch of Ariane 5. We will make five Ariane 5 this year, and tonight we will deliver for two key customers for Ariane Space. In upper position, we will deliver for Arabsat. This is the 11th launch we do for Arabsat, mm -hmm. with two end operators, which are CAXT in Saudi Arabia and uh, El Asat in uh, Greece and Cyprus. Mm -hmm. And in the lower position, we will deliver for the Indian Space Agency. It is ISRO, and it is the 20th. 23rd satellite we are going to orbit for his host. So tonight we have two good partners and friends on board on Iron 5. And two old friends. Yes. Have. Yes. Now, can you describe uh, the mission for us? Maybe give the people some facts and figures that we can remember. Yes. So, you know, we have transferred the launcher on the launch pad yesterday. During all day, we have made the final operation. We have filled the main stage, the upper stage. We have checked that all systems were green. And in a few minutes, at 6.01, we are going to Lift off. You know that the lift off occurs seven seconds after the initiation of the Vulcan. The mission is going to last 42 minutes. We will first separate on the upper position SGS 1 and Asat 4 after 27 minutes. And then after 42 minutes, we will separate GSAT 31. 31, right. You mentioned that we have double launches tonight. Is it fair to say that the double launch is, has become the Ariane 5 trademark? We can say that uh, this is uh, absolutely uh, the art of Ariane 5 mission. We have delivered many other missions. We have delivered Bepi Colombo. We have delivered uh, uh, Galileo last year. But it is true that year after year, we have delivered a lot of dual launch. And we have this specificity. In one launch, we make two missions, which is uh, quite interesting for the customers. Okay, last question, if you don't mind. We're coming off a big year. What do you see for this year? So this year, you know that we target up to 12 launches from the CSG with our current family of launchers. Mm -hmm. uh, among them, five I and five. Then we will have some Soyuz and some Vega. So it will be absolutely a big year also from CSG this year. Super. Stefan Israel, many thanks. Very clear as always. Stefan is going to take his place in what we call the fishbowl behind us. And he'll be back, of course, at the end of uh, the mission. We are going to stay in Jupiter and uh, present some of the key players who make the mission happen, the Dramatis Personae, if you uh, will. We're looking at the Ariane Space High Command, led by Stefan, who will make his, play, he'll make his way there momentarily, momentarily. With him, Roland Lagier, who is the Chief Technical Officer. Now, these gentlemen will make any decisions should anything unexpected come up uh, during the countdown or during the mission. You may see them on the phones with their teams here at the base or back in Europe. Coming up now, a brief presentation of the mission, some things to look out for. You know that the main stage and uh, the boosters are ignited at uh, ignition. 
The boosters will burn for about uh, two minutes and they are discarded when they have used up uh, all their fuel. The main stage, of course, continues burning. Less than a minute later, the fairing is released, our altitude now 100 kilometers up. Six and a half minutes later, the main stage engine will shut down and it is cast off in its turn. The upper stage engine then ignites and it will provi provide the remaining thrust to complete the mission. Our upper passenger, HS4 SGS-1, will be released at plus 27 minutes. It's held in place by a structure called the SILDA, which we no longer need, so we can discard that now. And finally, our second spacecraft, GSAT-31, separated at plus 42 minutes, and Ariane's mission is complete. Eight and a half minutes to go to the first Ariane launch of the year. Outside the launcher is waiting, and the weather, as you can see, we had rain last week. The last three days have been very sunny and warm. Until today, this afternoon, we got rain and clouds, so we don't know what the visibility is going to be like. DDFF said we're going to launch, and we're sure we are going to launch, but visibility, we'll have to wait and see. We'll hope for the best. Ariane can launch in the rain, it poses no problem to liftoff. In the middle of the countdown, countdown, of course, not simply a three, two, one, push a button and blast off, is a very complicated set of procedures, especially here in Jupiter, where there's a constant flow of information coming in to the people behind us here in the, uh, the fishbowl from all around the base. Two other people that you're going to be seeing tonight and especially hearing from as we move back into Jupiter you will see from Ariane Space, DDA Saeed, who is the mission uh, director. And he works alongside the DDO, also called the Range Operations Manager, a Kness person. Mirto Madlon tonight in the role. You'll be hearing him a lot because the DDO calls out all the key milestones during the countdown and uh, during the flight. DDO, attention pour la séquence finale lanceur. And he's going to call out the seven-minute mark. All right, seven minutes. Why is that important? It brings us into what's called the automatic or the synchronized uh, sequence, which are the final moments of the final uh, countdown, the tip of the iceberg, if you like. What's happening, basically, power is passing from the ground, which controls everything now, to the onboard computers on the launcher, making her autonomous. All right, you know everything. Our stage is set. We're go for launch. I'm going to make my way up to the broadcast booth, and while I'm doing that, take a look at a film on the launcher campaign to see how Arian is put together. Saudi just tertiary satellite one Helisat 4 was flown to French Guiana on an Antonov aircraft arriving at Cayenne's Felix Ebwe Airport. It was then transported by road from Cayenne to the European spaceport in Kourou. Saudi geostationary satellite 1 Hellas Sat 4 was installed in the S5C South facility in order to begin the preparation phase. The satellite was then transferred to fueling building S5B, where the Lockheed Martin team filled its tanks. The GSAT 31 satellite was also flown to French Guiana on an Antonov aircraft, arriving at Cayenne's Felix Hebwe Airport. It was then transported to the spaceport along with all the alloyed equipment and placed in the S5C North facility for preparation. The satellite was then transferred to fueling building S5A, where the ISRO team filled its tanks. Combined operations involving Saudi geostationary satellite 1 Helisat 4 and the launch vehicle began at D-11 in the S5B building with the integration of the satellite on its flight adapter. After assembly of the launch vehicle and checks on the electrical and propulsion systems, it was placed in secure standby on December 17th, then transferred to the final assembly building on January 17th. Combined satellite launch vehicle operations were initiated on January 21st. The satellites were assembled on the launch vehicle and all launch vehicle systems placed in flight configuration. 
The satellite was then transferred to the BAF final assembly building to be integrated on the SILA structure, placed under the fairing and integrated the launch vehicle with the upper composite. Combined operations for GSAT 31 and the launcher started at D-8 in the S-5A facility with integration on its flight adapter. The satellite was then transferred to the final assembly building to be directly mated onto the launch vehicle and encapsulated with the upper composite at D-6. Since D-6, the satellites of the year. There are some 1,700 people working around the space base in all, and our cameras are here in Jupiter, but many others are hard at work at many other sites across the range, and we want to bring you some of those. The range in all is large, about the size of Singapore or about the size of the island of Martinique. We're going to show you in just a moment one of those places where there's a lot of work being done now. It's up in the launch zone where the launch management teams are working under the direction of the launch complex operations manager today, Patrick Lucet, in the role. Now, most of their work was done earlier in the day. By the time we get to the automatic sequence here, the seven-minute mark, they, like most of us, like the launch vehicle itself, are waiting mainly. The work done up there carried out by two teams, one responsible for executing flight chronology and the other for verification of the flight worthiness of the Ariane 5 vehicle. Now, the Launch Complex Operations Manager heads up the group responsible for execution of the chronology. Now, he coordinates with Mission Control back here for final authorization to launch. And when all the conditions are right, he then okays the automatic sequence at the seven-minute mark, which we saw. They are closer to the launch pad than we are. Here in Jupiter, we're about 15 kilometers away, but they are right there. We mentioned earlier, the countdown is a complicated process and a long one. The final countdown actually began around 6 this morning with first checks of the electrical services and the inertial platform. Filling of the lower stage began at 1 o'clock. Filling the upper stage began about three hours ago. This split-screen image shows the propellant feeder arms in the middle of the launcher. We're going to pull back and you get a better view in just a second. Liquid hydrogen on the right, on the left, sorry, liquid oxygen on the right. They're putting propellant into the upper stage tanks. Now these arms pull back at minus seven seconds before ignition. You see them in the middle of the screen, the yellow bars running from the gantry into the upper stage. One of the last things you'll see before liftoff, so we want to take a minute and mention it. Minute and a half to go. The electrical power supply has been switched from the ground to on board, and here in Jupiter, the VIPs and the invited guests have begun to make their ways outside to watch the liftoff. There are two terraces, as you may know, on either side of the building that give a fine view. À tous de DDO, attention pour moins une minute. The DDO is going to call out the one-minute mark. Top à zéro moins une minute. All right, we're into the final 60 seconds. Give us a chance to say hello to our friends at ISRO and Bengaluru, to all of our friends at Kaxt and at Helisat and at Arabsat, to Lockheed Martin in the U.S., locally to the Kuru Cinemari and Kai Insights, to our industrial partners ISA and Kness, and to all of you following the broadcast on the Internet. We hope you are enjoying it. If you're not settled in, pull up a chair, and you can enjoy all the action. And that's about to begin. We're going to cut away and let you listen to the DDO for the final countdown. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcan. Allumage des deux AP, des deux AP, décollage Ariane VA247.
on local time and right on time. La première, la again, la mission, lifting off from the ground here in French Guiana with a lot of fire, carrying two new satellites. We lost her into the clouds. We didn't have much visibility, but we did have liftoff. The two boosters now providing 90-90% of our thrust, propelling the launcher along her trajectory at an ever higher velocity, as the DDO says all is working perfectly on board. Our mass at liftoff, 775 tons. And to get that sort of weight off the ground, you need a lot of push, and push we have. She's burning five tons of fuel every second. That's two and a half tons per second burning in each booster plus the core stage burning another 300 kilos of fuel again every second. Ariane 5 is now following the program in the onboard computer which gives all the orders including stage separations which we will soon see in less than a minute. The DDO says all is working fine on board. We're in the first of four flight phases. We'll describe each in turn and in detail so you can follow Ariane as she heads east across the Atlantic. Right now, the first flight phase, the single first stage engine and the two boosters are burning. The boosters will each consume their 240 tons in just over two minutes. In about uh, 20 seconds, they will be extinguished, and they're the first to be jettisoned, and you'll hear that from the DDO, and you'll see that, of course, on the animation as well. This first flight phase, using both cryogenic cold fuel and storable propellant, cryogenic offering certain advantages over storable, better and more precise performance, and its motors can be reignited. There we have right on time, separation of the two boosters. The DDO confirms it. They fall 500 kilometers from shore into a protected area. Give you an idea what it looks like from the onboard camera. There is a second booster to the port side of the ship, which is out of camera range. French Guiana was in part La chosen as a base for its opening on the water, launches posing no threat to the local population. We'll have more on that coming up. For now, on the bottom of your screen, take a look on the left, our altitude approaching 100 kilometers, and on the right, our speed. We've passed two kilometers per second. The speed we need for satellite separation, roughly nine kilometers per second, so keep your eyes on the numbers. And when we near the region of nine kilometers per second, we're getting near satellite separation. Separation, Fairing separation has come right on time. Separation given by two pyrotechnic systems, one horizontal and one vertical. They're cords that actually remove the fairing by a small contained explosion, and we emphasize contained, of course. We can separate the fairing now because we are out of the dense layers of the atmosphere, over 100 kilometers up. There's neither friction nor heating, which could disturb the passengers. Also, we can discard any dead weight when possible to maximize the launcher's performance. The fairing weighs two and a half tons, so it's good to get rid of it when we can. Ariane 5 is the heavy lift launcher. The two other members of the family, Soyuz, you know, lifting middle-sized payloads, two and three tons, and Vega, the light lift vehicle for missions of one ton roughly. With its family of launch vehicles, Ariane Space is the reference, providing launches of any mass to any orbit at any time. And Ariane Sp Space is part of Europe's space effort, which is a three-way affair among ESA, CNES, and Ariane Space, and you find them all here along with the customers. Ariane Space is in charge of operating the family of launchers and of marketing launch services and the Ariane program. ESA, in a nutshell, funding new programs, and the CNES overseeing coordination of all space space. The Guiana Space Center, the world's only dedicated commercial space base, where Ariane Space operating the launcher family Ariane 5 and soon to be Ariane 6, Soyuz and Vega, soon to be the updated Vega C. Ariane Space also managing the launcher and the satellite campaigns. We have the first of many films coming up for you now. We'll have films on both customers later on. For now, on the community of Ariane cities, highlighting towns that are part of the Ariane program.
2019 se cumplen 500 años de la primera expedición de la Vuelta al Mundo que partió de Sevilla. Esa Vuelta al Mundo de Magallanes y el Cano. Entonces Sevilla era la capital económica del mundo. El próximo año, 2019, a la presidencia de la Comunidad de Ciudad de Jarián la ostentará la ciudad de Sevilla. Es una enorme oportunidad y también un orgullo el centrar el interés de todo el sector aeroespacial en nuestra ciudad. Desde 2012 pertenecemos a la comunidad de Ciudad de Jarián y en ella hemos trabajado con otras ciudades para intentar que la inversión pública y privada haga del sector aeroespacial uno de nuestros motores de la economía. Para nosotros la oportunidad de esta presidencia de la comunidad de Ciudad de Jarián tiene también su broche de oro con la celebración de un consejo de ministros de la Agencia Espacial Europea en nuestra ciudad, en donde además se van a discutir importantes inversiones para los próximos años en este sector. Estoy convencido de que los debates que se produzcan, las reflexiones sobre la financiación y los modelos de inversión para estos proyectos van a hacer de Sevilla, sin duda, el centro de la atención mundial en la industria aeroespacial. If you followed uh, our launch last December, where we had, as a matter of fact, another GSAT, we also had a delegation from the community of area and cities from Les Mureaux, French town. Tonight, Sevilla, in English Seville, of course, CVA is a non-profit outfit aiming to strengthen cooperation among cities and organizations involved in Europe's space programs. We, meanwhile, are in the second powered flight phase, the single-engine core stage burning now. The boosters have done their job. Another minute to go before it shuts down. During the film on uh, Seville, we were picked up by our first downrange tracking station. We're going to go to a launch replay, the first of what we hope are many. You can relive those very exciting moments eight minutes ago. We have uh, cameras at several of the observation sites here across the base and uh, throughout the broadcast and at the end we will be bringing you replays like this one is another one from closer viewpoint. The Natal station, the downrange tracking station run by Brazil's defense department, it sees the lower stage burnout and separation. All of Ariane's trajectory has been designed to be followed from the ground, of course. We're waiting for confirmation of the shutdown of the lower stage and its separation. There you can see falling back into the Atlantic and the ignition of the upper stage. There's three commands given by the onboard computer in about 13 seconds. The lower stage falls back into the Atlantic off the Gulf of Guinea. Which brings us into the third and final powered flight phase, the single upper stage engine that'll burning until plus 25 minutes, another 16 minutes roughly. And what is the job of the upper stage, you may be asking? That is a good question. The upper stage takes the satellites to their injection point, positions them for separation, and then releases them. That's its propulsion role. But she also has a second role, which comes during the ballistics phase, is what they call the non-powered flight phase. And we'll have more on that coming up. For now, turning to our passengers, a film, our first look at Hellsat 4 SGS-1. Regarding in particular Saudi geostationary satellite 1 and Asat 4, INSPAS is proud for having been selected by Arabsat in 2015 to launch this satellite which has been manufactured by Lockheed Martin based 
and modernized well-known A2100 bus. The satellite will be located at 39 degree east orbital location. It will provide care band spot beams, communication services for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and will offer advanced care band beam communication services for Helasat, the Arabsat subsidiary. I would like to thank all the teams that have been involved in this program. First, of course, our customer Arabsat, who always relied on INS Pass with a dedicated, very efficient teamwork all along the program. Secondly, CAX and Helasat teams, who were always proactive and helpful during this smooth campaign and also in resolving issues when needed. And finally, Lockheed Martin, who always contributed with very constructive approaches and experience, dedicated team. Ariane Space has been serving the Mideast since 1985 when it launched Arabsat 1A, the region's very first satellite. Ariane Space also orbited the first satellites for Egypt, 1998, Libya, 2007, the United Arab Emirates in 2011, and Qatar in 2013. HS4 SGS-1 is the 11th Arabsat launched by Ariane Space and the 22nd to be orbited for the Mideast. Another look now for more on the satellite. Our power to communicate is the very basis, the essence of human civilization. Satellites unlock the ability to reliably connect from across the most remote places, transforming our understanding of the world and the way we live, work, and cooperate on a global scale. From the ancient times, Greece and Cyprus were the bridge of civilizations and the crossroads of trade between Middle East Africa and Europe. Our ambition is Hellasat to play this role, to be the window and the step of Middle East and Africa to Europe. Hellasat 4 is a powerful addition to our network and a major milestone to our business plan. It brings new capacity that will enable our existing and new customers to unlock growth opportunities in broadcasting, mobility, and private data networks. Alasat 4 will be placed in our orbital slot at 39 degrees east. The goal is to complement the extensive coverage of Halasat 3, our latest satellite, which was launched 19 months ago, and provide in-orbit backup solutions to our customers. Our vision is to offer high-quality, cost-effective satellite service that will enable our customers to grow their business in the most remote areas. Helahat 4 is the largest commercial satellite that Lockheed Martin built to date. It has electrical passion with high-performance electrical propellers and powered by the Noble Gazine. It features 20 kilowatt sun burners and a weight mass of more than six tons, achieving a lifetime of more than 20 years. The last set 4 will be launched by Ariane 5 in VA-247 Ariane Space Mission keeping the great experience the company had from the launch of Halasat 3 back in 2017. The satellite covers Europe, Middle East, and South Africa with KU and KA payload. In Europe, the satellite will expand Halasat capability with 22 additional KU, FSS, and BSS transponders. In Middle East will provide six additional transponders, which can be used to provide 100% redundancy to Halasat 3 in the area. In South Africa, it will expand Halasat capability with six additional transponders, addressing the need of satellite capacity in the area. The satellite will be monitored and controlled by a team of expert fully certified engineers through Halasat hot redundant facilities in Greece and Cyprus. A properly designed, built, and launched segment requires a respectively advanced level of flight operations so as to achieve the maximum of the satellite lifetime and the best of the service provisioning to the satellite customers. Offering premium satellite services since 2001, Halasat premiered with Halasat 2, positioned in 39 degrees east orbital position. After the successful launch of Halasat 3 in 2017, Halasat is now ready to welcome Halasat 4, the new addition to our fleet, offering unprecedented capacity to our already extensive network. The universe is expanding. So are we. While you were watching the film, we were picked up by our next downrange tracking station, Ascension Island, tiny island in the South Atlantic. 11 minutes to go in the upper stage burn. Arabsat 
the direct client for both satellite, founded in 1976, headquartered in Riyadh. Two satellite control centers, one in Riyadh, one in Tunis, serving more than 80 countries across the Mideast, Africa, and Europe. Another look now at our first passenger with more on CAXT. La propulsion est nominale, le pilotage est calme. King Abdulaziz City for Science and Technology, CAXT, is keen in investing in the technology of the future, which led to the creation of the Advanced Research Program. The program consists of several joint centers of excellence with prestigious U.S. academic and industrial entities, including MIT, Stanford, Caltech, University of California, Berkeley, and Boeing. Each center has been created to cover a strategic domain of interest that is vital to the development and prosperity of the kingdom such as the energy, water, mobility, and health domains. Energy has always been critical to Saudi Arabia. Roaring growth in domestic oil consumption imposes challenges in finding other means of producing efficient energy. Saudi Arabia is the largest country in the world with no natural bodies of water. It is now beginning to feel the impact of rapidly rising water demand, which requires innovating in new water technologies. The kingdom has capitalized on its massive fossil fuel resources by successfully building a petrochemical powerhouse that is recognized worldwide. With this edge, it is crucial to keep up with the evolution in this field by innovating in advanced material and manufacturing. Rapidly evolving technologies, along with demographic and economic changes, are expected to alter the healthcare system worldwide. This demands an extensive effort to advance health technologies. The population of Saudi Arabia is growing rapidly. Major Saudi cities face increasingly severe traffic congestion and accidents and deteriorating air quality. Developing new smart mobility solutions in the kingdom is crucial to reduce these effects. Space applications are fundamental tools for bringing sustainable development throughout the world. Saudi Arabia is investing in space and astronautics technologies to strengthen its position in telecommunications, disaster management, agriculture, environmental protection, and natural resource management. Saudi Arabia is taking the challenge of finding innovative methods to produce fresh food to its citizens in a place that has scarce freshwater resources. Information and communication technology is the new source of economic growth and development around the world. Nowadays, ICT is almost an essential enabler of all other domains. Every human-made system begins and ends with the environment. The harsh desert environment of Saudi Arabia demands that engineered systems be especially resilient to survive such conditions. Ariane 5 continues to function flawlessly. Ariane Space coming off a very good year in 2018. We spoke briefly with Stefan Israel about 11 launches we launched in every month except in February and May, but we launched twice in November and twice in December. 11 launches, four double launches, telecom satellites, navigation, space science, Earth observation. Satellites went to geostationary transfer orbit and sun-synchronous orbit. When I said Ariane Space flies to all orbits, I meant it. Next up, a second film on our second passenger, this time on the prime contractor Lockheed Martin.
Il reste moins de 4 minutes de propulsion de l'ESCA. HS4 or SGS-1 is the 46th Lockheed Martin satellite to be launched by Arian Space. There's another one in the backlog due for launch later this year. Our last launch for Lockheed Martin goes back to 2012, Flight 206, with the JCSAT-13 and Venusat for Vietnam, both satellites built by the companies. We had a Lockheed Charter. Some more numbers for you. This launch is the 306th mission performed by the Ariane family and the 103rd on an Ariane 5. Up next, a look at the relationship between Halasat SGS and Ariane space. I'm pleased to welcome this first Ariane 5 commercial launch of the year with on board two passengers. Saudi Geostationary Satellite 1 Elasat 4 as upper passenger, a Condosat for CAX and Elasat operators, along with GSAT 31 as lower passenger for ISRO. The Saudi Geostationary Satellite SGS 1 is the national satellite that provides secure satellite communication on the KA band for the government of Saudi Arabia. It provides 35 gigabit per second. It has the coverage of the Middle East, Europe, North Africa, and as well as a KU band payload for the Halasat subsidy of Arabsat. SGS-1 is a satellite that comes out of the alliance of the agreement between CAX and Arabsat, uh, the who jointly contracted Lockheed Martin to build two geostationary satellites. CAX is honored that it can provide the satellite in the name of Saudi Arabia thanks to the support of the custodian of Tullyham Mosque and King Salman and the awful scene of the Crown Prince who made a visit and monitored their manufacturing activities and wrote a precious word above the highest cloud, a sign of a new era of a new Saudi satellite on the geostationary orbit at 36,000 kilometers that comes de la after 15 par la Saudi made satellites previously launched by CAX on the lower Earth orbit. I would like to thank uh, His Highness Dr. Turki Al Saud, former president of CAX, and uh, chairman and president of CAX, Mr. Khalid Al Faleh. The Halasat payload will provide KU coverage over Europe, Middle East, and South Africa. It will provide extensive redundancy and backup capacities to further secure DTH networks and customer base and provide competitive advantage to its customers in Europe and other areas. We envision Halasat 4 to provide additional capacities for HD, 4K, and free to air channels, which will guarantee additional room for our existing and new customers to grow. Following the transfer orbit injection of the satellite, the Lockheed Martin Control Center in Colorado will begin the orbit raising operations with the support of Arabsat CACs and Halasat engineering teams to bring the satellite into the geostationary position of 39 degrees east. With the completion of the in-orbit raising operations and the in-orbit test, the Hellas SEC will assume the on-station operations and they will operate the spacecraft for the upcoming 23 years of orbital maneuver life. We had a very accommodating and smooth launch campaign thanks to a team from CAC, Stuckney, Arabsat and Lockheed Martin. It has been a prosperous journey and I would like to thank the Lockheed Martin team, the Ariane team, the Arabsat and CAC Stuckney teams for their support and excellent collaboration. I would like to thank my team, the Helasat team, for the excellent job they did. We are grateful for the cooperation and the service provided by Arian Space. I wish a long life to Saudi Geostationary Satellite 1 Helasat 4. During the film, we were picked up by our last downrange tracking station. It's in Malindi in Kenya, and it will see the upper stage burnout and satellite separations. We are coming up on extinction of the upper stage engine. In just a few seconds, you will hear the DDO confirm that. Extinction de l'étage supérieur cryotechnique. DDO has confirmed it. You'll see the nozzle shutting down on the animation. And we are into the final flight phase, non-powered. We are coasting. However, we have not reached our maximum speed. You can see we're approaching 9.3 kilometers Début des uh, per second. Profit de la Arian's car. maximum speed will be 9.7 kilometers per second. After that, you'll begin to see her slow down. When she separates uh, the first passenger in just about two minutes, her speed will be down to 9.4 kilometers per second, roughly. When she releases the SILDA, that's the carrying structure for the second passenger, at plus 29 minutes, she'll be flying at 8.7 kilometers per second. 
And finally, when she separates GSAT 31 at plus 42 minutes, her speed will be down to under 7 kilometers per second. With the power shut down, not only do you see our speed start to drop, but we are moving into a new coasting phase. It's the last flight phase, the only one not powered, as we mentioned. Just a minute to go until separation of our first passenger. The time we have is plus 27.14, just in about a minute. And it's always a moan of high concentration when you're approaching satellite separation. The teams have gone through these procedures before, but it, of course, calls for tremendous focus. You don't want to say tense, but I think focused, concentrated. Gives you an idea of the atmosphere here in Jupiter. You see it on the faces. All eyes on the computer screens in front of them and all ears on the phones as we await confirmation of our separation of our first passenger. LSAT 4 is GS1 coming in about six or seven seconds, and you will hear the DDO confirm it. Separation Saudi Geostationary Satellite 1 and LSAT 4. Well, DDO has confirmed it. You see, our first passenger pushed away from the mothership by a series of springs. First good news of the evening, successful separation of our first passenger at over a thousand kilometers up over Africa, Africa and just below the Africa. Arabian Peninsula. You will also notice that people here in Jupiter politely holding their applause because the mission isn't over. We still have to separate our final passenger, GSAT 31. And we are in our ballistics phase, the final phase of the mission. When choosing a space base, the Europeans wanted nearby hills where radar and telemetry reception could be installed. You're looking at this place called the CVI, the Quick Look Telemetry Display Control Center. It's on a hill just behind us in Jupiter, and it's another place with the launch zone that we saw at the top of the broadcast that is very, very busy. These teams have all the means for receiving, processing, Ensuite, storing, and analyzing all the data coming in from the ground stations along Ariane's flight path. Remember, we talked about the downrange tracking stations that follow the launcher. Well, right now, these teams are following all the key flight data coming in, and they're reporting the flight data status of the launcher back to the teams here in Jupiter. The announcements you hear made by the DDO come from the CVI. The information goes to them first, and then to the flight desk and to the launch complex operations manager. All part of the great information flow from points across the base back here to Jupiter. And so you understand Jupiter deserves its name as the nerve center of the space base. Later, these data will be treated to reconstitute the entire mission. The flight will be recreated in figures from liftoff to well after satellite separation and analyzed again. We are coming up in on SILDA separation, as you see the names of the downrange tracking stations uh, in yellow, the one currently following us. The SILDA is that black bell shape, which lets us carry a second passenger, and you, hear, you will hear the DDO call out that separation. Du de double, Ariane. Coming right on time. The same system of springs, pushing it away from the mothership, revealing our lower passenger, GSAT-31. Due for separation in about, uh, about minutes. GSAT-31, built by ISRO, the Indian Space Research uh, Organization, of course. We mentioned Ariane 5 known for its uh, double launches. She's the only commercial launcher capable of lifting two heavy satellites, and we've done hundreds. And each one requires a SILDA or the predecessors of the SILDA on previous versions of Ariane. The orbiting of GSAT-31 along with GSAT-30, which is an additional geostationary satellite due to be lofted soon by the European Launch Services provider, Ariane Space, marks another vivid demonstration of the strong bond uniting Europe and India in space cooperation. The Indian Space Research Organization has a vision which is to harness space technology for national development 
while pursuing space science research as well as planetary explanation. Uh, exploration, sorry. ISRO also fosters the use of space to help develop the Indian subcontinent. Our second passenger now, another look at GZ-31. Please let me introduce GSAT-31, one of the two satellites to be launched by Ariane 5, Flight VA-247. GSAT-31 is an operational communication satellite designed and manufactured by ISRO, the Indian Space and Research Organization, in order to provide communication services from geostationary orbit for a mission life greater than 15 years. It derives its heritage from ILAS and GSAT-7, which were flown on earlier Ariane 5 launch vehicles. GSAT-31 will be the 23rd ISRO satellite launched by Ariane Space following the launch of GSAT-11 last December, also on Ariane 5. Our cooperation with the Indian Space and Research Organization goes back to 1981 when Ariane Flight L03 launched the Apple spacecraft. It is always with great pleasure that we welcome at CSG our Indian friends. And our Indian friends, their second passenger due to be separated in about 10 minutes. ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, founded in 1969, having a birthday this year, I believe in August. ISRO's done so much for the nation, so important to India, using space technology for national development, pursuing, as we mentioned, space science research. With uh, GSAT-31, ISRO will again foster the use of space to help bridge the digital divide on the Indian subcontinent. As was mentioned in the film by Alina, Arian Space launched an Apple experimental satellite for India back in 1981 that was on an Arian 1 making India one of Ariane Space's oldest customers. So you can imagine the strong bond linking Ariane Space with India. The two have been cooperating nearly 40 years now in their long-term partnership. Since the launch of Apple, Ariane Space has orbited 22 satellites, signed 24 launch contracts with the Indian Space Agency, also winning 89% of the geostationary orbit launch contracts open to non-Indian launch systems. More on our Indian side. Communication plays a very important role in the overall societal development. In a country like India, which has different geographical topology with many hilly and remote regions, effective communication through satellite becomes inevitable. For more than three decades, ISRO has launched and maintained a constellation of communication satellites, providing a variety of operational communication services in the country. GSAT-31 is a communication satellite which will provide continuity of services currently provided by INSAT-4CR and INSAT-4A. GSAT-31 spacecraft is a high power communication satellite with payloads in KU band with an effective isotropic radiated power of 51.5 uh, dBW. This spacecraft is a versatile one with unique configuration of providing flexible frequency segment and flexible coverage. The satellite is configured on ISRO's enhanced I2K bus and weighs around 2,600 kilograms at liftoff. Its power system comprises of deployable solar arrays of three panels each with two 135 ampere hour lithium ion batteries supporting spacecraft during eclipse conditions. The satellite has two large propellant tanks accommodated within the central structural cylinder. The liquid apogee motor is mounted on a separate deck which interfaces with the bottom ring of the cylinder. GSAT 31 satellite with 19 KU band transponders will join the fleet of 18 operational communication satellites and further boost the country's in orbit communication assets. The satellite is designed to operate in KU band and will expand 
VSAT services and other broadcasting requirements. The payload also has facility for reconfiguration of fixed satellite services by sending commands from ground. Two KU band beacon downlink signals also generated by the satellite are transmitted along with the KU band transponder signals for ground tracking purpose. Lots of flexibility has been incorporated in the payload in terms of frequency, coverage and orbital location. Additionally, a part of the KU band spectrum will be used for the first time in Indian satellites. All the subsystems of the payload are having good flight heritage. ISRO always strives to improve design of its satellites through continuous research and development efforts to progressively enhance their performance. An in-house designed 2.2 by 2 meter deployable single shell Gregorian reflector is incorporated in GSAT-31 for better coverage and operations. This spacecraft provides communication services in Indian mainland and island areas such as number one, connectivity to very small aperture terminals for ATM, stock exchange and e-governance applications. Number two, telecommunication applications for bulk data transfer for a host of emerging applications. Number three, emergency communications for disaster management support. It can also be placed at an alternate orbital slot and is capable of providing DTH applications. GSAT-31 is built to provide seamless communication services for more than 15 years, which will further strengthen ISRO's constellation of communication satellites and will ensure reliable communication services in the country. The satellite is now ready for its space journey and is scheduled to be launched on board Ariane 5 launch vehicle from the European spaceport in Kourou, French Guyana. Four minutes to go until separation of GSAT-31, so don't anybody go anywhere. We want to mention that there has been a slight loss of telemetry signal today. It's quite normal, not a problem, but it is an interesting process. Sometimes it happens. The ground stations suffer a brief blackout due to the launcher's position. Again, quite normal. It happens usually between stations. Tonight, there was a brief loss of signal, 50, 50 seconds, between Natal's loss of the signal and Ascension Island's acquisition of it. And there was another four-second loss, very tiny one, between the Gabon station in Libreville, their loss of the signal, and the acquisition by the Malindi station, Gabon, of course, on the east coast, and Malindi on the west coast of Africa. Again, quite normal. We don't lose the information. It's stored in the vehicle. It's stored on board, and the vehicle equipment bay is something called the central telemetry unit, and inside that is something called mass memory. The exact times and duration of the signal loss are programmed in the vehicle equipment bay, and the telemetry unit is programmed to record the data it would normally be sending down to the stations on the ground. Our final film coming up on the relationship between Ariane Space and ISRO. GSAT-31 is a high-power communication satellite. This is based on ISRO's I2K extended bus. This satellite will provide a host of communication services in our country in KU band frequency. The satellite was realized at Bangalore, India in fast track mode under the guidance of Chairman ISRO and the Director URSC. The realization of this satellite was po possible due to immense support given by Team ISRO. GSAT 31 was shipped to the launch pad early January and all the preparatory activities were carried out as planned. Our long-standing relations with the Arian Space have ensured smooth, even free operations at the launch pad. The place and the facilities here are similar to our spaceport at Srigari Kota. Followed by the launch and successful injection of GSAT-31 by Arian 5, the solar panels will be deployed and the orbit rising maneuvers will be carried out by Master Control Facility in India. Subsequent to this, in-orbit test will be initiated and the satellite will be made available to the users at the earliest. I wish all the best to GSAT-31 and the teams involved in the launch. One minute to go until launch, until uh, separation of our 
lower passenger, we talked about the uh, long and fruitful cooperation between ISRO and Ariane Space. ISRO satellites have flown on all versions of the Ariane. One, two, three, four, and five. French Guiana may be 7,000 kilometers from Paris, but it is very important for Europe. The Guiana Space Center offering an independent access to space, vital for Europe strategically. You see the Jupiter mission controller in two parts. The invited guests and the VIP is on one side of the glass, and the operational people on the other, inside what we call the fishbowl. All these posts there have a backup as well. The Guiana Space Center, Europe's spaceport, certified ISO 14001 in 2004, which means its activities meet the international environment standards. We're launching from the CSG, where we have been launching for 55, oh, 50 years. And during those five decades, we've launched more than half the telecommunication satellites in operation today. Waiting for confirmation from the DDO on separation of our lower passenger. Separation G731. And there you have the final good news. And you heard the applause from people here in Jupiter, handshakes all around, champagne forthcoming. As Ariane 5 delivers to the smiling faces her second passenger, G731, over the Indian Ocean, not far from the Indian subcontinent and the station at Hassan on the west coast in Karnataka State will get the signal first. So from the rather focused, concentrated minutes just a moment ago, you can see the change here in Jupiter. Very buoyant all across the space center and at all the points and posts where people are following the launcher and the satellites. Work now just beginning or soon will be at the different ground uh, stations for both GSAT and Helisat SGS and at all the other sites around the world where the satellite's first maneuvers are being monitored. We are waiting now for the traditional post-separation speeches. The podium is being set up. We will be hearing from Stefan Israel of Arian Space, Bader al Suwaidan of Kaxt, Dr. Sivan from ISRO, Guy Budelschies from Lockheed Martin, Lockheed Martin and Christodoulos Propopatas of Helisat. Some of these people seated on the VIP side of Jupiter here, but Stefan Israel, of course, working on the inside there and will shortly be making his way out to join us on this side of the glass. So a very big night for India, for Saudi Arabia, for Greece, for all of our customers and all of our friends around the world. Congratulations uh, all around. Stefan Israel, I see, is on this side of the glass. We'll go to a launch replay and then we'll be hearing from uh, Stefan. series of uh, replays from the different sites. Stefan Israel's is making his way to the podium. He will begin the sequence of post-launch speeches. I think he's waiting for the cameras to be ready. There are some people who are shaking hands. Stefan Israel waiting very politely for his chance at the microphone. 
a good start to the year for Arian, Arian Space and for all of uh, our friends in the Mideast. Two new satellites, three customers. Stefan Israel waiting is about to make his way to the podium. He will make his speech. He makes two speeches actually. He'll be speaking and then introduce the speakers that will follow him. And then once the final speaker is over, he will make a final speech. The next voice you hear, Stefan Israel. So ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Ion Space is delighted to announce that Saudi Arabia Geostationary Satellite 1, ELASAT 4, and GSAT 31 have been separated as planned on the targeted geostationary transfer orbit. For the first IM5 launch of the year, our heavyweight vehicle has once more performed flawlessly. Congratulations to all. I would like first to thank Arabsat, our direct customer for Saudi Geostationary Satellite 1, ELASAT 4. 34 years, 34 years after Arabsat A1, 1A, sorry, this 11th mission together is a night is a new bright success. I want to express my gratitude to our partners and friends in Riyadh, where I'm sure this success is now celebrated. Notably, I want to thank Arabsat CEO Khalid Balkeyour for his trust and his friendship. Saudi Geostationary Satellite 1 and Assad 4 will provide capacity for two operators. First, King Abdulaziz City for Science and Technology, CAXT, which will operate SGS1. Thanks to the director of Saudi Geostationary Program, Dr. Bader al Suwaidan, for being with us here tonight in CAG. Second, ELASAT, which will operate ELASAT 4. With this payload, the Mediterranean operator, who we partnered with in 2017 for the launch of ELASAT 3, will provide services for Europe and South Africa. I want to thank its CEO, Christo Doulos Protopapas, who is with us, with us tonight. I want also to celebrate the presence of key people tonight with us. We have the Cypriot Minister of Transport, Communications and Works, Mrs. Vasiliki Anastasiatou, as well as the Greek General Secretary of Post and Telecommunications, Mr. Vasilios Maglaras. Last but not least, I want to congratulate our longtime US partner, Lockheed Martin, and Mr. Guy Buttelchils, who is VP Communication Satellite in Lockheed Martin. So for Lockheed Martin, it's a comeback after a few years uh, not with us in CSG, and it is a 46 satellite we have orbited for Lockheed Martin, and we have one more in our backlog to deliver this year. After having celebrated uh, our partnership with Arabsat, I wish now to celebrate our partnership with the Indian Space Agency, ISRO. Iron Space is ISRO that uh, is honored that ISRO has entrusted Iron 5 for two launches back to back. You know that at the end of last year, we have delivered to orbit GSAT 11. It is the most powerful satellite of ISRO. And now we are very happy to start 2011 with GSAT 2019, sorry, with GSAT 31. We celebrate tonight the 23rd successful mission together and uh, it was uh, remembered in our uh, broadcast. Uh, the first mission we did together was APOL. It was the third launch of Ariane in 1981. For such an amazing collaboration, as well as for the successful, the successful manufacturing and delivery of GSAT 31, I want to deeply thank ISRO and congratulate ISRO. For sure, uh, I have a special thought for ISRO chairman, Dr. Sivan, who is watching uh, this launch from Bangalore. And I want also to uh, celebrate Mr. Pandian, who is with us tonight and who is director of the SDSC. We will also have the pleasure to welcome ISRO for another launch this year with GSAT 30, which is still in our backlog, and it will be a second launch for ISRO in, 2000, in 2019. With this first launch of the year, 
we celebrate Ariane's 40th birthday. You know that the first Ariane was launched the 24 uh, December 1979. And Ariane 5 reassets tonight its leading position on the geostationary market. Indeed, tonight's launch has started a series of up to five Ariane 5 ECA dual launches in 2019, and they will be all de dedicated to global commercial customers in dual launches. So I want to congratulate all our partners who played their part in this new success. ISA for sure, and all the member states of the Ariane program whose support is essential. Speaking about our European footprint, I would like to mention the delegation from the city of Sevilla, which holds the 2019 presidency of the community of Ariane cities. I want also to thank Ariane Group, Ariane 5 Prime, and first shareholder of Ariane Space. We have today with us tonight André Hubert Roussel. André Hubert has taken over the position of Alain Charmeau after many years of success for Alain, and we are very proud and happy to welcome André Hubert with us tonight in the Jupiter Room. I want to celebrate CNES as well, Ariane 5 Design Authority and our daily partner here in CSG. And I wish also to say a word for all the employees of the launch basis for their flexibility and their capacity to deliver in due time. Of course, I would like to pay my tribute to all my Iron Space colleagues. It is the first success of the year and we are now waiting for at least 11 more. I would like now to welcome to the stage our customers and partners. Thank you very much. <laughs> 